Welcome to Flask Eye Wesleyan Church. We're so glad you're here. Why don't you go ahead and stand together as we sing songs and praise and worship to our Lord. Again, grace to you and peace this morning from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And it seems like I haven't seen you guys since last year. <laughs> Dad jokes. 
right. <laughs> well, it's great to see everyone here in Wide Awake this morning. I think Wide Awake. We'll just run with it. Who all stayed up to watch the ball drop last night? Yeah. Who all went to bed early? <laughs> we got a good spread, good mix of people. All right. Well, we got a few quick announcements to go through. So first of all, prayer gathering is moving from Wednesdays to Fridays. So if you are used to gathering on Wednesdays to in here for prayer, that meeting is moving to Fridays at 10 a.m., I think here in the sanctuary. If you haven't been part of that and you're able to join, you are more than welcome to come out and join in that time of prayer for our church and our community and our world. Uh, next, men's breakfast. The next men's breakfast is Saturday, January 14th at 8 a.m. We typically do it every second Saturday. So if you are a male or know a male, let them know about men's breakfast. It's a great time of fellowship. It's always fun to gather together and eat good pancakes and bacon. And we had sauces last time and eggs and I'm already getting hungry. We're starting a few new ministries this month, this year, uh, to expand the ministries of our church. The first one that we're going to talk about is Kids Connect. Kids Connect is for children uh, in preschool through fifth grade. Uh, we're going to be meeting on Wednesday nights here in the sanctuary, and the kickoff is next Wednesday. So not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, the 11th. It's going to run from 6 to 8 p.m. All right. And then uh, that's going to be running concurrent with <coughs> the Women's Connect, uh, which Women's Connect will be meeting in the foyer, and then Kids Connect in here. Typically, it'll be on the first and third Wednesdays of the month, but I'm going to be gone this first Wednesday, so we're just pushing it off a week this first time around. And it's going to be good, and it's going to be fun, and I'm excited. All right. Also starting this month is... Celebrate Recovery. <laughs> I had a brain fart there for a second. Whoa, what? Oh, there's a video. Actually begins in right. a Can we store. restart the video? Um, I happen to Let's see if we can get there. Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, I'm Susan. And Susan, would you tell us uh, your recovery story? Well, my recovery story actually begins in a thrift store. Um, I happened to be in the book section, and I picked up a book called Life's Healing Choices by Johnny Baker because I thought it would help me in my grieving process. I had just lost my husband the year before. Um, so for $1.99, right, my journey had begun. Um, I started reading through the steps, and when I got to step four, which is known as the inventory step, um, you start going through your past and listing things that have happened to you, your relationships. And as I started listing them and then really evaluating how I felt about things that had happened and whether I was responsible for what had happened or not, it was very freeing because a lot of things that happened in my life I wasn't responsible for. And I could actually let them go instead of holding on to the guilt. But then things I was responsible for, I could actually analyze and deal with. And so that's where my journey began. Um, then I started looking for a CR, and I happened to find one in Camden, and I figured it would, you know, wasn't too far to drive, so I started attending. Um, my first meeting, I was very nervous, right? Lost. I didn't feel like I belonged until I got into the sharing part. And when I shared why I was there, I was a widow, I immediately broke into tears, but the women were so encouraging, um, and the speaker, Johnny Baker, just brought out little things that helped me through my life that I went back again, and I kept going back and back, and then um, I realized that there was a lot of other areas in my life I needed to work on. Um, I grew up in a dysfunctional family, I grew up with legalistic um, views, with religion. I had those in my background. Um, I had some anxiety, um, depression. Um, I knew I had codependent um, tendencies and I wasn't ready to even start dealing with them and I'm just starting to deal with some of them, some boundary issues. And I also have an eating disorder and I knew that. Um, and I 
started working on all these areas. And I would like to now be able to help other people you know, work on these areas and realize that we're never perfect. We never get there. But God has control of our lives. And I would love to be able to teach other people how um, to heal in the process and the steps so they can feel this freedom um, and continue growing. Tonight we are starting a Celebrate Recovery ministry. Celebrate Recovery helps people sort through their hurts, habits, and hang-ups with a focus on how God is the one that frees us from our addictions, from our habits, from our hurts. And it is only through the power of God that we can find true freedom. If you have any questions about that, uh, you can talk to Scott and Sue Morgan, um, and they would love to uh, to help you. Yeah, you guys can stand up, look around there, right there in the middle. And uh, say it's a, it's a wonderful ministry that we are excited to get started here. We've been working on it for a few years, and God provided the leaders that we've been praying for. So... Uh, Let's continue this morning with a word of prayer, and then we will continue to sing praises to our God. So would you bow your heads with me? Again, I thank you for this morning, for this opportunity to gather together, to worship your name, to seek your face, and to start off the new year fo with a focus on you. Lord God, we thank you for each day that you have gifted to us, the lives that you have that you have given to us, and we acknowledge that each breath is dependent on, on your grace and your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would be with us this morning as we as we continue to to seek to honor and please you with our time. That uh, that this act of worship this morning would be a dedication of this year to you, as each day, as each hour, as each moment should be. Lord, would you fill us with your Spirit, transform us by your presence through our time shared together this morning, that we would leave this place encouraged and equipped to be your ministers to our world. We ask for all this in your name. Amen. Stand up as we continue with songs of praise and worship. Next we have To God Be the Glory, a wonderful little hymn.
hurt him. They don't deserve it, and they even let him sin and take my son for sin. You know, each and every one of us pulled one away, one of us, and we think of that. So we can know what is it about. Okay, are we ready? All right. So I'll talk to you for a few minutes while I situate things here. Everybody have a good New Year? So far? <laughs> There's plenty of time for that to change, right? Okay. <laughs> Some honest people today. Good. Okay. Um, I'm so glad I have this today, but I got to tell you, um, I was really used to, before I came here, we had a church I was in, had a huge pulpit. Some guy in the church made it. The thing had to be this wide. And there was the main platform was about this, but it had two wings on it, about like this. So you could bring your water, your books, and everything else. So, so I'm going to try to get used to this. It's been a while since I've been up here, too. So let's see. And I had a hor horrible time printing this thing off this morning. And it's funny because I got here and then we're having trouble with all the sound and stuff too. So my day has started off pretty good. <laughs> my New Year's started off interesting. So <laughs> we just got to laugh at it, right? Because if you don't laugh, then you what? You get mad. And then you start throwing stuff. Well, maybe not you, but <laughs> my wife's watching. She would be laughing right now. <laughs> she would know that that would be true. Although I'm not nearly as bad as I used to be. So today, I don't know which one of these I'm going to use yet. But I, I printed it off, but I have it on the computer. I guess I'm using my paper. I just lost it. <laughs> well, let's see if I can get it back. I like technology, but technology can be very... Um, Unreliable. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, let me see if I can't lose it. All right. Or maybe I'll just have both out. All right. So I really enjoyed studying for this message. Okay. Is there any way we can turn those down, Devin, a little bit? Ah, there you are. Okay. Perfect. Um, I, in studying for this message, I realized that um, I've always been about Christians doing what they should be doing, you know, serving, um, using your spiritual gift, growing in the Lord, and, you know, things along that line. And I realized that it actually has a name. It's called discipleship. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about being and making disciples. And I apologize in advance that I don't have um, verses for you. Um, Donna left the office early this week, and I just wasn't able to get things to her in time. So let's just dive right into it. Let's ask God's blessing on our time together, and then we can get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you that you are the omnipotent one, and you are the holy one, the God of all the world. Lord, and you created everything we see and all the things we don't see, and I'm sure there's a lot more of that. And Lord, I just pray that you bless your word as it goes out today, and just give me clarity of thought and speech, Lord, and Thank you so much for this time and the opportunity to be here. For those who have come out on this uh, brand new uh, year to worship you and to honor you. May you receive all the honor. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So, what is a disciple? Well, for those of you who have ever heard me preach, you know that I like to define my terms. And I thought it would be a really good idea to know what we're talking about here. So, I'm going to read something for you. This is what this is the new book we're going to be studying in my class um, starting next week. I'm assuming that 
Craig, did you get through all the way through? You did? Okay. But we'll be starting this next week. <laughs> Forgot to ask. I asked Rachel, but how, she, didn't, she, she didn't know. So she didn't have the book. All right. So this is the definition of discipleship. Discipleship is the lifelong process of spiritual development for those who commit their lives to following Jesus Christ. It is far more about what it means to know and follow the person of Jesus Christ than merely gaining knowledge about him. Good definition. And I'm done with this, so I'll put it over here. So the word disciple in the Bible means be a disciple of one, follow his precepts and instructions, be a learner or a pupil. Well, as a learner, we need to be learning, right? And as a pupil, we need to be studying. Now, how many, how many pupils do we have out there? How many kids? Are you enjoying your time off from school? Can't wait to get back, right? Start learning? Wow, no, okay. That's okay. I was with you. <laughs> I was like my time off. I didn't ever want to go back. So what exactly is it that we need to be studying or learning? Well, it's his precepts and instructions that he taught us um, directly, or he teaches us through his word, like the epistles, the letters of John, Peter, Paul, all those, all that, all that kind of stuff, and all, all the Old Testament. There's so much there. So how do we do that? How do we learn what we need to learn about God and the things that he taught us? Well, we start with the word of God, the Bible. Now, it's really good to read the word. And it's really good to just take it and just read it. But how you read it is important. Have you ever got a love letter from somebody? Now, so I apologize for some of my uh, Sunday school class. They're gonna, some of this is going to seem very familiar to you. <laughs> Have you ever got a, any, you can raise your hand. You ever get a love letter from somebody? Okay, a couple people. Okay, what did you do with it? Did you just read it and just like toss it aside? Oh, gee, that was nice. Well, when I was in the Navy, and I, my wife and I were writing back and forth to each other before we were married, I wouldn't just read the letter. I would go through it. Like, what did she say? What didn't she say? What does she mean by that? And those are the kinds of things we need to do when we're, when we're looking at the Word of God. Like I said, it's good to read it, but let's really be thinking about it. We can be studying it. All right. So as we read His Word and apply His Word, we grow in our relationship with him. Now, there's other ways to grow as well, besides just reading the word. Um, these things are called spiritual disciplines. We're going to talk about some of those today. Now, one of the things that I found really helpful when I'm reading the word is reading different versions. Um, I started off with the King James, and the first time I read an NIV, I was like, oh, that's what he's trying to say? I just... I was like, wow, okay. And then I went back to the King James, and I could see it. I could see it, but it just wasn't there. Now, there's nothing wrong with the King James at all. But it's not written in the word that we really use, the these, thous, and the those. In fact, you know what's so funny is when I first started reading, when I very first was first saved, I'd read like this. Let me get a good one here. Okay. 16. Then the 11 disciples went their way into Galilee, the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. 17, when, see what I was doing? I was reading the numbers, the verse numbers, because I didn't know. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to read those. So it took me a while to tune those out. All right. So I really recommend reading some different versions of the Bible. Um, I know one of the ones I almost always, when I'm studying for a message, um, it's, excellent, it's an excellent study tool. Now, I, would, I don't recommend reading it just to read it, but the message it's really a paraphrase more of a, than a translation. But sometimes they nail it, and sometimes you're left thinking, huh? <laughs> it's kind of like, where did they get that from? But anyway, there's the NIV. There's the NLT. Um, what, what does Pastor Glenn promote? I can't remember. but NLB? ES, ESV is another good one, too. Yep. Okay. Have a regular time and place for prayer. I hate routine, but I love my routine at the same time. I hate routine because of doing the same thing over and over again. But the good thing about that is it keeps me on track. 
And you know when I have the hardest time not staying in the Word and not praying is when I'm on vacation or I have a day off. Why? Because I'm out of my routine. And when I get out of my routine, then I have to be extra focused to make sure that I stick with doing the things that I need to be doing. All right. Keep praying throughout the day. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. Not that you got to be praying every second of the day. But I have an attitude of prayer. Be thinking about, oh, you know what, maybe I should pray about this first. Instead of trying everything else and then falling flat on your face and saying, oh, yeah, you know what, I should pray about this. So the other thing is when I'm out walking around delivering the mail, I like, I, I know, I'm always looking up. My wife tells me I'm going to fall in a ditch one of these days. But I like looking up at the birds. I like looking up at the trees. And the, I like to stop and smell the roses and whatever else is out there. I like to look at the intricate details in nature. I like the little wispies up in the sky. And I just, it just makes me think about how God is so good and how he, just, how he created everything. And it's just, it just makes me think about God and just makes me praise him. It makes me think, oh, God, you're so good. And I just start thinking about things to praise him for. Um, let's see, meditate on his word. Now, this is another good one. You know, if whenever you have um, some quiet time or you, uh, just as you're going about through your day, I like to read my Bible first thing in the morning because it helps me to think about what I've read throughout the day. I kind of, I mull it over and I think about it. Psalm 30, excuse me, Psalm 63, 6 says, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. I was in the Navy. I used to do that. How about you, Chuck? Ever think about God's word when you were standing watch? Oh, yeah. You got four hours of doing nothing except standing there. <laughs> you think about God's word, it gives you something to do and it helps you. All right. It's interesting because I knew that I wouldn't get too far into the Psalms before I found something about meditation or meditating on God's word. <laughs> and I didn't. It's in the second verse in the first Psalm. So I'm going to read Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he, med he meditate day and night. Not that you have to do it all through the day, but that you're thinking about it. You know, you're thinking about it as, as your day goes on. And this one is important. Memorizing scripture. Psalm 119.11 says, Your word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to tell somebody off or to give them a piece of my mind that I probably just can't afford to give. That the verses come flooding into my mind about things that I've read that are keeping me or are supposed to keep me from doing that thing that I want to do or other areas of sin. Things just, verses just come to mind. And it's, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, bringing those verses back to mind. Now, you might not necessarily have to memorize um, the chapter, the book, chapter, and verse, but as long as you're memorizing the verse, you might not be able to pull it up and say, oh, okay, well, you know, Matthew 15, 6 says, you might, we might not be able to do that, but at least, and it's good if you can, but, you know, at least get to the point where you're, you're familiar with these verses. And let the Holy, give the Holy Spirit some ammunition to work with in your life. All right, now this one I don't do is keeping a journal. I don't know if I'm just too lazy or what, but keeping a journal is a good thing to do. I, I totally agree with the concept of it, but um, write down your prayer requests and then write down when they get answered and how they got answered. Also, there's another thing that we can write down. You know who's really good, about, who's really good at this is um, uh, Nancy DeMoss Walgamut. She's always talking about writing stuff down. And she'll write down stuff in a journal. And she'll go back to it, and she'll go, like, oh, wow, how did I ever get that out of the Scripture? You know, she goes back and looks at something she wrote 20, 30 years ago or something. All right, fasting. That's a good one, too. Uh, <laughs> now, fasting usually involves some kind of food. It doesn't have to. Um, one of the, you know what I do at, um, for Lent is... Um, I always give up fruity candy. I swear I'm addicted to that stuff. It's like, it's like 
my chocolate for women. Like, women, how chocolate is to you, that's how fruity candy is to me. I can just eat that stuff and like, oh, just melt because it's so good. And actually, I had a little bit of a hard time this past Lent because I don't know if my body was just needing it or if it was addicted to it or what, but I had a hard time fasting from that. And that's, that is still some kind of a sacrifice. And we fast so that we can let God know that um, we have, uh, that we're serious. We're serious about a request or we're serious about whatever it is we're fasting about. I, I always feel that maybe we should have a reason for fast, not just to fast fast, although I guess that, that can be good in itself, but let's, you know, have a reason for it, you know, where you need, you know, you need help with um, some kind of a sin, or, you know, you need a um, loved one to get saved, or something like that, and it just shows God that we're serious. All right, how about finding a mentor? Now, when I was in the Navy, my supervisor and my supervisor's supervisor were both saved, both um, Christians, and I remember when I first, when I, they had prayer meeting every night. When we were underway out at sea, we had prayer meeting every night. And I remember the first prayer meeting I went to, I came with all of my books and all my rosary and because I was born and raised Catholic, and that's all I'd ever known. And they're like, well, wow, what, what's all this stuff? I'm like, well, this is my, my, my books, my prayer books, and my, my rosary and stuff. And they're like, well, you don't really need that. I'm like, I don't. They said, no, because prayer is just what? Communication between you and God. It's just like talking to your friend because he is our friend. Yeah, he's the creator of the universe, but, you know, Christ said, you know, we're his friends. We talk to him. We have to have some reverence when we talk to him because he is the king of the universe, right? But we can talk to him just like we're, we're talking back and forth. And if you want to use stuff like that, that's fine, but you don't need to. It's not, an, it's not a necessity like I thought it was. All right. Now, there's another great way to grow, and that's attend a Sunday school class. Or maybe listen to Christian radio or find podcasts or other messages from the Internet from reputable teachers. You just want to make sure that the teacher you're listening to is um, solid in their biblical foundation. All right. So however we grow with these spiritual disciplines, we just need to make sure that we're doing it. We need to be consistently growing and learning so, so that we can teach others and train others. Because I can only teach or train you up to the ability that I have. For example, I can teach you how to play guitar, but only up to what I know. I can't teach you to play that kind of stuff because I'm not there yet. You know how it's done, I just don't know how to do it, okay? Now, I had the opportunity to teach well, probably teach my oldest daughter math, but at least help the other two with their math all the way through school, up and through geometry and algebra. And then there's this really weird stuff called Algebra 2 out there. <laughs> I have never taken Algebra 2. I, was, I didn't take that one in high school. So, um, Denise, this is where I'm going to mention you <laughs> if she's here. I gave her a little bit of warning. So I came, to, I came to church one Sunday. I brought the papers and stuff. I'm like, Denise, how do, you, how do you do this? She's like, oh, Rob, it's real simple. All you do is blah, 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 blah. And she made it look like it was a piece of cake. And, of course, for her, it was a piece of cake. And I understood it. But for me to take that to my daughter and explain it to her, it's just, it was a little bit harder to do. And then to do that night after night, I didn't want to call Denise every night and, you know, and, but you know what, from what I know about Denise, I'm sure she would have helped me out regardless. But so why is that important? Why is it important that we keep growing? Because if we're going to help each other, if we're going to help others, we're going to talk about the Great Commission here in a little bit. But we need, we need to continue in growing. You know, I was talking to uh, Pastor Glenn about the message, and I had a couple questions, and I, I talked to Pastor Craig about a couple things too. And Pastor Glenn said even when he was in his doctorate program, that the people that were doctors above him or learning along with him said that they were constantly learning. They hadn't, they'd never got to a point where they knew it all. And how could you ever get to a point where you know everything about the eternal living word of God, right? So we need to be continually learning so that we can help mentor people. We can help people come along in their Christian walk. Um, the other thing we can do is comfort 
um, people with the comfort that we ourselves have been comforted with. We can take our experiences and share them. So, talked about the Great Commission. Let's go back there. Let's look at Matthew. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. I'll just read them here. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. Now, there's only one command in those two verses. In this, you can answer this. Does anybody know where it is? Craig, you can stay quiet. <laughs> Does anybody know where the command is? What, which one of these? Do you know what I thought it was until I started studying for this? I thought it was go ye. Absolutely. And I think Jody probably heard me screaming all the way across the house because when I started studying this and I looked at go ye, it wasn't an imperative. I'm like, what? That can't be right. Where's the imperative? I started looking for it. Because the command, which one, what is the command? I could have sworn it would have been, go ye. Do you know where the command is? Which one of these is the command? Yeah, make disciples or teach. Absolutely. That's the command. Now, now the teach in verse 19 is different from the teaching in verse 20. So the, the one up in verse 19 means to be a disciple of one or make a disciple. One of the, the actual uh, strong says, be a disciple, make a disciple. Um, the word teaching in verse 20 means to hold discourse with others in order to instruct them, to discharge the office of a teacher, or to conduct oneself as a teacher. What's the idea here? Being a teacher, right? We're all sp we're supposed to be teaching, right? Now, before we can really teach anybody, before we can make disciples, we need to be a disciple ourselves. So what's the very first thing that we have to do to become a disciple of Jesus Christ? Very first thing. Anybody? Yes. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, right? That's the first thing. We kind of, we can't really, can't be a disciple if you, of Christ if you're not, one of his to begin with. Ron, I might need another one of these <laughs> if you get a chance. All right. So you've heard Pastor Glenn up here talking about the ABCs of Christ, right? Receiving Christ. Well, so how do we receive Christ? What do we, what, what do we have to know? What do we have to believe? Well, the ABCs admit. Admit that you're a sinner. Now, to me, that's the easiest part. Because I look back on my life, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I know I'm a sinner. <laughs> it's like, there's no question about that. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. B, believe. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. John 3.16. You want to quote it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only... Amen. All right. And then confess. Jesus said... Or we, can, well, we need to confess that, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Now, it's interesting, that word confess. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The word confess is really interesting in the Greek because it's actually a compound word. And it's a the combination of words between, um, or however you put it together, the word for together and the word for word. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate that. Every church needs a Ron. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if, thank you so much. All right. Now, the word confess means to say the same thing as another or simply to agree with God. Well, what are we agreeing with God about? That he's holy, we're not, and we can't save ourselves. Amen? Yeah. Now, once we receive Christ as our Savior, that gives birth gives us spiritual birth, and enables us to understand and apply God's words, words to our lives. 
then we need to grow. I've, I've known so many Christians over my life that have just received Christ and were just saved by the skin of their teeth and they never grew. They're missing the point. We need to be growing. We need to be growing in Christ. We need to learn how to walk in the Spirit so we can teach others. And as we grow in the Lord, we can help others along the way. Let's look at, um, if you want to turn over to Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he says here, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That word go, the same go that's over in chapter uh, 28 of Matthew, verse 19. Same word. And um, kind of has the idea of to pursue the journey on which one is entered or to continue on one's journey. Salvation is just the beginning. That's just the entryway. There's so much more after we receive Christ as our Savior. Now, when I was in the Navy, the guy that led me to the Lord probably led about at least probably 12 to 15 people to the Lord, which is a lot to do in the Navy. <laughs> but after I got saved, we, were, we weren't really good friends or anything like that beforehand, but we were you know, kind of acquaintances, and we were uh, in the same department. Anyway, he was a gunner's mate. I worked on um, uh, weapon systems. And so one night, I won't, I don't have enough time to tell you the, the entire story. I'd be happy to talk to you about it sometime. But after he led me to the Lord, he kind of dropped me like a hot potato. I had questions for him. And I'd, I'd ask him, I'd say, hey, you know, what about this? And he'd be like, well, well, you know, whatever, whatever. And, and he'd kind of blow me off. And so I asked my, I had those two spiritual mentors I had, I asked him about that. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, Glenn does, not our Glenn, but my Glenn when I was in the Navy, just so we're clear on that. <laughs> and he said, yeah, Glenn doesn't really get the fact that there's more than just salvation, that you need to grow. And so I asked, I asked Glenn a couple more times. I was like, you know, what about, I had these questions. Aren't you going to help me? And he's like, no, I did my job. You did your job? Of course, looking back on it, that, I'm shocked by that. But then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just ask somebody else. And we think of it. No, that's not how it's supposed to work. Let me get back over to my notes here. <laughs> so it isn't good enough to just preach the gospel and lead people to the Lord. We must press on and teach them to ensure that they grow in Christ and become participating members of the body of Christ. If Christians don't grow, how will they learn to apply the principles of tithing or using their spiritual gifts? How will Christians learn that Christianity isn't a spectator sport and that it's an all-hands-on-deck effort, everyone doing their part as God has gifted them? Now let's get back to the go or go ye. Remember that go is the command. Now, in English, it looks like a present active verb. In the Greek, it's totally different. In the Greek, it's an aorist tense, which probably means nothing to most of you. It's a past tense, and it's a passive participle. I'm looking at that, and I'm like, how can go ye be passive and past tense at the same time? And it just didn't, I wasn't understanding it. So that's when I called Glenn and Craig, and I kind of had some ideas about it. It was almost like Christ was assuming that we're going to be going. And the idea, it has the idea of as you're going, as you're going, like I know you're going to be going, teach. Teach is the command. So as we go, we, we teach. Now, I got to stop wandering away from my notes. <laughs> I get the, I get some people talk with their hands. I talk with my whole body. I guess I, I don't know. So, oh, here we go. Okay, so yeah, this is what I was going to say next. So, I don't think he meant for everybody to get up and go to Africa or South America. I don't think that's what he meant here. I think that the command was to the church, and that the church is supposed to teach. Now we can teach as members. The church is made up of members, right? So. We can still take this personally as well. As members of the church, we can indirectly teach through all that we do and say those all around us, like our family, our friends, our coworkers, and trust me, they're watching. They know you're a Christian. They're watching. They're watching you really close. And we can directly teach our family 
and others as we get the chance. And we should be looking for opportunities to teach others. But you know, here in the church, you can help make it possible for others to be taught. Maybe you can't teach a class. Maybe you can't get up here and preach. It's scary. I know. You don't have to. But you can make it possible for somebody else to. You want to know one of the things you guys can do? There's a little room up there, a window in it. You know what that is? That's the nursery. Somebody told me there was at least four families in this church that want to attend a Sunday school class but can't because I should have warned you before ahead of time. I'm very passionate about this. You're probably going to experience a very wide range of emotions on this when I preach because I see the sense of urgency of it. Let me just take a second. Mm. There's at least four families, probably more, that one would attend Sunday school class that can't because there's nobody to watch their kids. Why does Kara have to beg people who work in the nursery? We need to be teaching. There's people that want to be taught and can't be taught because there's nobody to watch their kids. What about Scott and Susan's class is coming up? They need the same thing. And th that's just the tip of the iceberg. They need more than that. There's so many things. We need to be stepping up as a church and, and allowing people to be taught, allowing people to go to classes so that they can be taught because they want to learn. Speaking of using the gifts and stuff, what would it look like in this church? What would it look like if everybody here was using their spiritual gifts every week? And then the people that came in were loved. The people that came in were encouraged, were exhorted. They were extended mercy and grace and forgiveness and being forgiven and having their physical and spiritual needs met. What would that look like? I think the world couldn't stay away. And you know, I just want to—I just want to cut off here. Just I just want to say another thing: that the world is teaching their doctrine. They're making—they're they're cramming it down everybody's throat. We need to teach the Word of God because it is the truth. We need to get that message out. We need to tell people they don't have to buy into that stuff because God loves them and God has a plan for them. God has a plan for us. And God only wants the very best for us. He's not trying to crimp your style. He's not trying to keep the world from having fun. No. God's word is perfect. God loves us so much that he wants us to avoid certain things. He wants us to lay aside certain things. And it's hard. It's hard because, boy, I'll tell you what, we want to do whatever it is that we do. Our little pet sins, or like I said, telling people off, or whatever it is. We need to control that. And we need to be teaching. We need to be setting the example. We need to tell the world they can be free from that. They can be free from the things that bind them. They don't think they're bound, but they get into that, whatever it is, and they find out they're not all that happy with it. And it doesn't fulfill them. It doesn't fill their need. It doesn't fill that God-sized hole in their heart that only Christ can do. It's our job to teach them. It's our job to bring them into the church and then to have somewhere for them to go. We don't have enough classes right now. You know what, you know, I, 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 you know what I'd love to see? I was thinking about this. I'd love to see this church be a place where new people come in every week and that we have so many new people, we don't know what to do with them. We have so many Sunday school classes that every room in this church is filled with people teaching and learning. I would love to see, I would love to see that. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I can't remember what I was going to say because I can't, oh, I, just get, I get so flustered sometimes thinking about it. We need to be the church that Christ commanded us to be. We need to be preaching the gospel. Amen. And then we need to be teaching them, teaching them to observe the things that Christ himself taught. 
either through whatever he directly said or, like I said earlier, through his word. We all have a part in this, even if it's just being a nurse. You know what? I, I know why. I know it's unfair. I know why people don't want to serve in the nursery. I know why people don't want to teach. I've been there. I've been burnt out. I've been in a class that I didn't think I could get out of. Because you don't want to quit because you don't want the class to be untaught, but you're miserable teaching it. So, because you've done it for so long. I know how you feel. I've been there. So what do we need? What would it be if we had enough people in the nursery? Maybe we'd only have to do it once a month. Once, you know, once, once every three months, if we had enough people. You know, what about teaching a class? And we've talked about this at the board. And I've been very clear that we need to set time limits on things. Because I burnt out. I've got to the point where I didn't care if I was on stage playing or drumming. You don't want to get there. It's not good for you. It's not good for the church. So, are you willing to do whatever it takes to do what Jesus Christ told us to do? Even if it's a bit inconvenient? Are you with me in serving him? In closing, are we growing? We need to make sure that we're growing because if we're not growing, we're dying. Let's move forward in our progress with the Lord. Let's move forward in our walk with the Lord. Let's continue to learn what he told us to do, the things that he told us to stay away from, and, and just living in his word. Are we being a disciple? Are we making disciples? Or are we just, or are we making it possible for others to do that? Making it possible for others to teach and to bring in. You see, this is an all hands on deck effort. We need you here. For those of you that are at home watching, I don't know, is that thing on even? I don't even know if it's on or not, but we need you here. You need to be here, and we need you here because we are the body of Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be what this community all around us needs, and they need it. All right. That's it. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, so much for who you are. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the great commission that you've given to us, Lord. And I pray that you help us to do all of it, Lord, not just winning souls, Lord, but bringing them to church and, and teaching them about you and your precepts and your commands and how to live a righteous and holy life so that they can be truly happy. And not that happiness is the important thing, but to be joyful and to know you and to be free from the life of sin. And for us who have been Christians for so long, to be free from the sin that so easily entangles us, Lord. And we just pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you work through us, Lord. And we pray for boldness as a church, Lord. We pray that you would give us the boldness. As your apostles pray for boldness, we pray for boldness, Lord. Help us to be bold as we go through our week, Lord. And, and as we talk to our coworkers, give us a boldness in telling them about you, Lord. Give us your wisdom, Lord, in how to lead them to Christ. Give us your wisdom, Lord, as we seek to teach those around us and teach those here in the church, Lord. And we thank you so much for it. And we just praise you for who you are and pray your blessing on the rest of this year and on all the things that are going on here, Lord. We thank you so much for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.